this week is going to be confined space determination. So how do you decide if something is a confined space? Is it not a confined space? Is it a permit required confined space? All good questions. All good questions. So let's dive in. Here we go. Okay. So I'm walking out there and I look at everything. I'm like, I think it's confined space. You don't think it's confined space. I don't think so. It's there we go. Convenient. There we go. There's the, we that's how it starts right there. <laughs> Everywhere we go, it starts like that. Yep. So we thought, you know what? Let's do an episode breaking that down. All right. So the first one is just going to be kind of deciding, is it limited or restricted egress first? So is it a person door, an exit size door, or is it a small hatch? What are we working with? Or somewhere we get, in between? Because we get asked all the time. People read the standard. Yep. And they say, well, it says this. What does limited or restricted mean? And that's one of the biggest things. OSHA does not give us a definition of what that means in terms of inches or feet of the size of the space opening. So that's the first thing is you've got to decide that as a company is what are you going to consider that? Is it either a full exit you size take, door or it's somewhere you take an between? air makeup unit. They're all different kinds of doors. Yeah. Condensers, different kinds of doors. Spiral chillers, different kinds of doors. Yeah. I mean, you, you got to break that down. So you've got to first decide that. Does it have the sloping floors? You know, can you get in it? Is it big enough to, to get your body in there or not? And is it meant for you to basically camp out in there and like hang this. out? Like this. Can you do a podcast in can, there? <laughs> yep. You know, can you work in there? Is it normal work environment where everything is fine to just be in there? It's just what's what's going on inside that space you say no it's got a lot of ammonium product well guess what guess what so that's the first questions is you've got to decide as a company size opening what are you going to call a space or not and kind of work through that and then the biggest thing that you want to keep in mind when you're looking at limited or restricted egress can you get in it does it have the slopey floors how hard is it going to be to get the person out that's the first thing i look at if they have a problem of any kind could be medical could be something else is, is it going to be a problem? And I think one of the biggest things you could do during your annual tours with the fire department, ask them. Yeah. They, do, you, do you think, would you go in there and get a person out of there? No, he thinks combined space. Well, guess what? Yeah. Or your ambulance crews yeah. for that matter. Would an ambulance crew or an EMT crew go in and treat a person that's had an issue in that space? And if they're like, no. Because your EMTs, they don't generally, for the ambulance sure. crews, have confined space training. They won't go in. They want the person to come to them. And no, and no one has ever wrote on a permit, I will have a medical condition while I'm in there. So, <laughs> no, no, we, never so we have to plan for it. Yes. So that's, that's where you yes. look at it. All right. So that's the first thing. The next thing we're going to work through is what is going to it? So do we have vapor or chemical or process water or anything like that piped to product. it, going to it, some kind of product, something flowing in, grain, is it coming from above? What does that look like? Is it steam? What's happening inside that space? What are the hazards? And you're also going to be looking at things like, is there a fall hazard? Yeah, it That's could be one. a 10-foot drop. Yeah. And people say... It's a perfect space, but if it has a flat ladder entry... And it's a huge drop of 10 feet or something. Well, that's that goes back to my it's limited hard to get them out of ingress. Yeah. yeah. So, and just to let you know, you can go back to episode 12 and 13 and kind of reference some of the stuff. And again, this is just our opinion. This is basically, we do confine space for a living. Wearing shirt. That's one of the things that we train on. We've done a lot of entries. We've been there for rescues. We've been there for problems and some things. So, I mean, I don't know. We probably do a couple thousand rescues and we, entries we, during our drills every year. And then we've been there for live projects and stuff where they're doing them live. So this is just our opinion. Take it how just you want. Just our daily life. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. So then the next thing we're going to want to break down is what is the job task that the person is going to be doing inside that space? You want to consider so, that. Because some people say it's not a confined space, but actually at 10 o'clock it is at night. Yep. So the person that you're working with when you're doing these confined space determinations, you want to make sure that they know the entire life cycle of that space. What What's happening and what do we have to do? We have to go in there and PM some stuff quarterly mm -hmm. or do swabs or enter in every like hour. I just did a call and they talked about they got to go in and clean out a condenser. I'm like, well, yep. yeah. So what are they going to lock out? And what are they not? But it's the cleaning is what they had questions about. It wasn't matter if it's a space or not. The cleaning is where all the questions are coming from. Yep. You're starting to introduce additional hazards at that point. So yep, that's one of the questions that you may have. Now, if you have additional questions beyond what this covers, again, 
episode 12 and 13, or if you're looking for really in-depth stuff, you can go to allensafetycoaching.com. Our only sponsor. Our our only sponsor, (laughs) allensafetycoaching.com. I've got an entire confined space module on how to manage all of this from doing the determinations, doing the assessments, all the way through how to structure your permit, what should be in it, the training, the program, all of it. So you can get more data on there if you're looking for that. So the last one that I have is why would we not want to classify something as a space? Because we usually get a lot of pushback yeah. when we say that's a confined space. Once we say those words, I mean, like the pushback. It's I, just I, I'll immediate. ask sometimes before I go, well, they'll say, can you send a bid? You know, like, what do you want me to do? Right, confined space says, how many space you got? We got 12. And I get there and I got 52 of them. <laughs> yeah, and or like, 200. So, yeah, <laughs> how, how did you get to 12? But it comes down to what she's going to say. They don't believe it is for certain reasons. Yeah, so the biggest one hands down is going to have to do with the labor piece and how often we're entering it. Yep. We go in daily. Yep. So it's amazing how we have to do something daily, hourly. Somehow that negates everything that we just talked about because we have to do it all the time and that we can't be taking that offline every day or every hour. We can't be doing a permit. How much downtime? And it's like, I mean, the permit takes at least two minutes a day to fill out. So, I mean, but it doesn't negate all these things that we just talked about. And that's where you want to stay focused when you're doing your determinations. Frequency doesn't have anything to do with whether it's a space. And if you have to do it on a Saturday and pay overtime, that doesn't have anything to do with it either. So those are the two biggest pushbacks that we generally see a location have to work through when they're working on, is this a space or is it not? training. We don't want to have to do all that. We want to train all those people. We don't want to have to train food safety, even though they're going in the spiral all the time. Still doing we don't want to do that. Right. We don't want to have to buy all the gear, the equipment, the meters and calibration of those and cal gas. And we don't want to do all that. We don't want to fill out a permit. We don't want to have a permit. We don't want to do all that. We don't want to have to have rescue yeah, teams. Yeah, forget, forget the rescue teams. Well, they're, yeah. that could yeah, be I mean, days. <laughs> no, yeah, we but don't. it's not. That's the point. So what happens is people... They almost like start adding up. It's going to take three months to get all this done. So it's not a space. Uh, right? <laughs> so you're like, no, the it, takes, it, it takes, takes a few <laughs> hours and you're fine for the whole year. Yeah. So the amount of time that, that it takes to now, if we say this is a space, now we got to do all this stuff. We got to have a program. We got to right. develop all these things. Yes. That doesn't negate. It was always a space. It was always a hazard. And you should have maybe always been doing these things. And the fact that we haven't done them yet doesn't mean that it's not a space and that there aren't hazards and putting the employee at risk potentially. So the biggest thing that I would encourage you to do is reframe this and look at it as confined space and utilizing a permit is a management tool. The whole it's not a, a tool. It shouldn't yeah. be viewed as a negative. Remember, our goal is zero injuries. So how do we manage zero injuries if we know that we've got some of these hazards going on and it could be hard to get them out of the space? Because if I'm going to break the plane, Yep. And somebody says it is a space or not a space. The management tool helps decide those problems. It helps And part make of the sure management tool could be, do I even need to be breaking the plane? Do I need to be breaking the plane? It's going to help me figure out what kind of PPE do I need. It's going to help me determine where should someone be so that I can yell out, hey, I'm having a problem in here. I need some help. Mm-hmm. There's someone there. There's somebody on standby. There's somebody right outside the space. I've got gas meters where maybe I wouldn't have them if I said that it wasn't a space. So it's putting buffers in place just to make sure we don't have a problem. It's an insurance Because I got a weird one. So big, big trash dumpsters. Yep. Right? Got them at the plants, got them at the housework, uh, everywhere. Yep. Empty, a big door at the end, open them up. I don't call them fine space at all. You close the end and you fill it with a whole bunch of busted pallets and everything else with nails. And now somebody tries to climb in there to get something out. Now the edge is so high up. It's so full. How do you get them out if they get an injury? Now I will call that a confined space because it's a management tool. Don't go in there because we say in awareness training, don't go anywhere that has a sign. Yep. So for those of you who are in food plants, we're just going to run down a list really quickly of the the spaces the that interesting are the, ones. the most debated, right. and, and we'll give you our opinion at the very end. Are you doing number one or am I doing number one? Go ahead. Tumblers. Tumblers. We have a lot of people talk about those. Yep. Tumblers. I would say condensing towers. Yes, absolutely. I've got one. It's called a spiral. A spiral freezer. A spiral freezer. Because yep, you go they in have big doors, and you but... go all the way up and all the way back and underneath and... That, yep, and it's got a big door, so sometimes we, we right. have What's to on that. What's another one that's interesting? Another one is mixers, mixer blenders. Well, it's only five foot deep. Yeah. But you have to crawl all the way in there to repair the paddles. 
Yep, you do. Yeah, so we actually weld on the paddles. And you know, and just I'll give this away. How you know if your maintenance team is welding on the paddles? Look at it during sanitation. The one that everyone complains about with the doors is the air makeup units. Air makeup units. We got to change filters. Yep. So that entire list, and there's you need to go more, through as a company or and as decide a, and break down how you're going to manage. Now, this. disclaimer again. This is just my opinion, but I'm going to tell and you right opinion. now. <laughs> yeah, in your opinion, I'm going to tell you right now. All those are spaces in my world because. Typically speaking, we haven't put other engineering controls in place. And so most of the time when I see them and I walk up on them, they're spaces. And and someone's got to have a really strong argument for me to be like, I agree, those are not spaces. So typically speaking, I would look at those when you go out and evaluate your site as they are first. And then try and figure out how are they not. Because we've had people have 400 spaces and agree to 392 of them, but not these four. <laughs> yes, 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 <laughs> it's, yes. It's just interesting that. how this, yes. these are the ones. So what I would also encourage you to do, last thing before we end here, is if frequency is one of the big things or labor is one of the big things, or you don't want to call these a confined space, find an engineering control, reconfigure it, find out a way to not have to break the plane and not have to go in. Look at technology. What can we do? And how do we make it so that... We're not putting the employee at risk. Because the we, goal is what? Yeah, no injuries, That's right? That's the goal. No matter what. All the other stuff is just Fluff. stuff. So how do we make sure the employee is not being put in harm's way and that we've got management tools and we've got some different things that are permanently in place so that we don't have to do it? So instead of saying it's not a space, let's put something in place so that we don't even have to do that job task. We find a Absolutely. different way. So. Absolutely. I think, All right. I think we're almost done on this one. We are. Again. You can catch us on social media. Alan Safety LLC is our handle. Joe Allen, Jen Allen. Apple Allen. Podcast, Spotify, YouTube, yep, Facebook. I mean, yep, you how can many take us with you. Now, you can so. listen to us offline if you want on the podcast side if YouTube doesn't work for you. And yeah, you can catch us on LinkedIn. And other than that, we'll, we'll catch you next time. Thanks, everybody, and have a great week. Thank you for listening to Safe, Efficient, Profitable, a worker safety podcast. If you're looking for more in-depth discussions or step-by-step -step solutions on all of the different safety and regulatory topics, please visit us at www.allensafetycoaching.com for web-based virtual coaching and training or at www.allen-safety.com to book our team for on-site services, training sessions, to order merchandise, to learn more about our team and what services we provide in the field, or just simply to request a topic for us to cover on our next podcast. If you found today's podcast helpful and would like to support our podcast further, please help us by subscribing, liking, and sharing this podcast with anyone that could benefit from the information we cover here as that helps us to continue to put out this free content. Thank you so much for your support.